Hello, my name is Carla Reed, and I got diagnosed with mesenchymal chondrosarcoma early December of 2022. It started with a minor toothache. While I was pregnant with my second daughter, I didn't think much of it. I started experiencing numbness in my face around um, the cheek area. I was having vision problems with my left eye. I decided to get checked from the dentist and they saw that I had some loose tooth in the back area and they wanted to do an extraction and they sent me to a surgeon and when I shared the symptoms and the experience with him, he told me that it wasn't a tooth infection, but it could be a mess on my cheek. He said, we have to do a CT scan. And I received the news that I had a mess. I had a tumor on my cheek. He asked me if I could come the next week for a biopsy. The results came the following week. I received the news that I was diagnosed with a rare and aggressive form of cancer. You know, my last couple of weeks, you know, I got diagnosed with cancer and I'm believing for my healing. I'm contending for my healing. I'm standing on my healing. I'm praising the Lord in advance for my healing. He, he already has made the decree, but it's all in his timing. And no matter what it looks like, even if he heals me instantly, or if he or if he allows me to go through the process of, you know, the, the treatment, whatever he whatever they decide to do, it doesn't take away from the fact that God is God and that God is good. And that no matter what I go through, I know that he is the author and the finisher of my faith. And I know that God is going to turn it around and use it all for my good. I was driving to the dentist and my prayer was different that morning. I was praying to God and I said, God, I don't care what the result says. I don't care what the dentist, the surgeon might tell me. I will keep praising you. I will keep worshiping you. Nothing will stop my praise. I will not let the enemy stop my praise. And when I received the results, I cried and I wept. And in my mind, I said, God, why me? I felt as if God had forsaken me. I felt as if God had left me in a situation that was bigger than me, that I thought there was no hope. When the surgeon left, I heard the voice of God so clear and he said, do you mean what you just prayed? Will you still worship me? Will you still praise me? Will you still pray in the midst of your suffering? And in that moment, I made the decision and I said, yes, Lord. I meant every word that I said, and I will praise you, I will worship you. The dentist assistant before the CT scan, she gave me the price of $150. And right when I was going to do the CT scan, she came in right away and she said, I'm so sorry, I gave you the wrong price. It was supposed to be about $600, but don't worry about it. The surgeon, he said that we will honor it and we will give it to you for that price, $150. And I believe that that was the start of the miracles, something beautiful that God was beginning to do in my life in the midst of my suffering. Hi guys, I just wanted to personally invite you 
uh, to these prayer meetings. The Holy Spirit put it on my heart to start a prayer meeting every single morning. And in these meetings, we're praying in the Spirit, we're worshiping, um, and we're just pressing into the presence of God. Uh, today, it was the first meeting, and the glory of God just fell in this place and there was actually like a mist in our room and so i know that god is going to pour out his spirit these are not prayer meetings for my healing a lot of people are praying for my healing and i'm grateful for everyone who is praying for me these are prayer meetings that the holy spirit put on my heart so that we can press into his presence and just seek him like never before for your word god hallelujah i thank you god hallelujah during my stay at the hospital i felt the Lord uh, he put it on my heart to get on Facebook and just worship and have other people worship with me and I got on and I began to worship I just worship the Lord I was still struggling because I was a baby and I said man like I don't want to be around no lukewarm people so <laughs> I said God put me around the right people and then he led led me to Carla and um, you know just a bunch of people that were on fire for God and um, she was praying and I just remember thinking man this woman is so strong Bless she is you, so Lord. strong and faithful you. Jesus you are faithful you are faithful Jesus and from you that moment faithful. he said I want you to get on zoom and have people join you and pray I want people to pray with you I want people to worship with you he said, but I don't want you to pray in English. I want you to pray in tongues. I want you to pray in the Holy Spirit. So God had given me an instruction. And the next day, we started these Zoom prayers. And God's cloud, His glory cloud, appeared in the hospital room. You will dry up. I cut it with the axe. Now in Jesus' name, healing is my portion. It was a, a feeling that I've never felt before. It, it was as if God's presence was so thick in that room. And she's not even hurt. She's not even in frame. Her face is not even there. She has her phone laying down. And I remember looking at another glory cloud. Another, another just like the, the glory of the Lord was just there. That even the nurse came in and she came knocking and she asked me and my husband, she said, do you guys have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost? And we said, yes, we do. The presence of the Lord was so thick in that room that it drew her to the room and she asked us if we had the Holy Ghost. And so we said, we sure do. And so here we are, you know, just talking about Jesus. I got to pray for her. The Lord touched her. She was trying to keep her feet intact because she almost fell. Um, but it's not about that. It's the fact that we made room for the Holy Ghost to move in that hospital. And if she felt the Lord's presence, I know many others felt the Lord's presence. And I'm not talking about a broadcast. I'm talking about being alone with the Father, having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, the yes, next you can't uh, the miracle was that God gave me a word and it was in the book of Esther and God uh, had told me to share with the ladies that were in the Zoom prayer meetings that we had found favor in the sight of the king of our king jesus and that very same day my husband went to the uh he checked our mail and i received a two thousand dollar check in the mail that i was not expecting but we needed it at the time we really needed that check and we really needed uh, food and our bills paid.
they began discussing of uh, surgery and chemotherapy and radiation because we are talking about a, a rare and aggressive form of cancer and they insisted on the surgery uh, first getting the tumor removed and I'm not gonna lie I was afraid I was afraid of the surgery because uh, they didn't know how the tumor would look uh, it was growing up towards my eye and it was growing downwards uh, my teeth my teeth were loose and the doctors wanted me to uh, get the surgery quickly or else they would have to remove my eye and from then when I received that news I remember I was devastated I went home and I would cry and I would cry and I would still ask God why me and I remember I heard the voice of God and he said begin to document everything begin to write everything down because not only will you write many books but this will be one of one of your first books that you will write and you will document you will document every miracle you will document everything that I'm doing in your life in this moment in this season if you only knew how my life was six eight years from now you wouldn't even recognize the person that you're talking to right now that you're listening to I was destructive cussing all the time drinking smoking doing whatever I wanted I was promiscuous what about Shatarabosia? I was promiscuous. I was doing everything that you could think of. And God came and He changed my life. He rescued me when I was 20 years old. He saved me in my room. What about Shatarabosia? He delivered me in my room. And I heard the audible voice of God. And He said, So do not fear, for I am with you. Because He is holy. He is my Father. He is my God. Oh, yes, Jesus. In the midst of all of this, I would cry out to God. If I've seen your glory cloud appear, if I've seen the manifestation of your glory, why don't you dissolve the tumor? Why don't you heal me? And God would tell me two things. He would tell me to press, to keep pressing, and He would tell me to trust, to trust Him, and to not lean on my own understanding, and that it was all going to make sense. And God would tell me that people would know who my God is. And from there, I said, God, I'm going to trust you even if it's hard to trust you. Because if I'm honest, sometimes it is hard to trust God. But we have to make the decision to trust Him and to believe and to have faith. The Word says that we, we build our faith. Faith comes from hearing the Word of God. And so the more I began to get in the Word, the more I began to uh, read the Word of God, the more I was building my faith, the more my faith was increasing to believe for my healing. And Jesus said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith and no confidence in me? That lets you know that Jesus was trying to teach the disciples, you have to have faith in me. You have to put your trust in me, that no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, you have to put your faith in me. How do you have faith? You build it by reading the Word of God. If you're not reading the Word of God, then there goes your faith. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, if you're not reading the Word, if you're not studying it, if you're not meditating on it, then there goes your faith. I fought these doctors. And I said, I don't want the surgery. I told them, I believe that God can heal me. I believe that God will dissolve the tumor. And I stood on that. And then I began to think about, well, 
Is it that I have a fear? Do I have a fear of surgery? And I gave him my fear. And in exchange, God gave, gave me peace. And I agreed to the surgery. I went into my surgery. I started getting anxiety. I began to feel the nerve, just a nervous feeling because they said, we're going to remove the fibula bone from your leg. We're going to reconstruct your face. We're gonna go in your mouth. We're gonna remove the back of your teeth. And when you hear that from a doctor, you get nervous. You don't know how you're gonna look afterwards. You don't know what you're gonna go through. You don't know the pain that you're going to endure and suffer. You just don't know until you go through it. Today is the day of my surgery. Uh, it's gonna be a 10 hour surgery. You know, I'm not worried. I'm not worried, the Lord already told me, this is what he told me, that his angels were already waiting for me in that room and they were in position waiting for me. And so I know that the Lord is with me. I know that his angels are with me. I feel his peace all around me. The surgery day came and I felt this peace that I haven't felt. And I knew that Jesus was with me. And the surgeon, one of the surgeons came in and he said, hey Carla, by the way, we might have to remove your eye because we don't know if it's going to be difficult to remove. And I couldn't leave because the anesthesia was already going inside of my veins. And that moment when fear tried to set in, I heard God's voice so clear. And he said, they will not remove your eye. You will see, you will wake up with your eye. Just trust me. I went in for the surgery and I woke up with two eyes and I was able to see my family. Hey, baby. Hi. I love you. I can't let me see your pretty face. Uh -huh. During the surgery, the doctors, the surgeons, were calling my husband and they were telling him we don't know how we're going to remove the tumor. But God, God did it. The tumor was 100% encapsulated. It was in a shell and they were able to scoop it out. There was a prayer that we all prayed and we said, God, shrink the tumor. God, let the tumor dry up. We dry up the cancer in the name of Jesus, that when the doctors opened up my face, the tumor was dried up, it was encapsulated, it was in a shell. And so I believe that God heard all of our prayers. God did it. So here I am. It's a need to worship. My face swelled up so I can't talk that much anymore. But I just wanted to testify that God is good. Never stop worshiping Him. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you, Father. I love you, Holy Spirit. They told me that I was going to have a breathing tube and a feeding tube. They did give me the feeding tube, but they didn't give me a breathing tube. This was one of my prayers. I said, God, I don't want that breathing tube. I don't want anything to get in the way of my voice. I don't want anything to stop me from worshiping you. When I woke up, I didn't have that breathing tube. I didn't need it. And I was able to worship God. That is God showing you that he's real. He is sh showing you 
the demonstration through my life that I am a walking and a living testimony of God's miracles. One of the surgeons, he asked me, how are you able to see when I was working one centimeter away from your eye? I mean, I did the same surgery on another young man and when he woke up, he had both of his eyes, but he wasn't able to see with that eye and you were able to see with your eye. And I looked at him and I said, that's, that's God, that's Jesus. And Jesus told me that I was going to keep my eye. I was able to minister to my mom. I was able to uh, share with her the gospel and share with her about speaking in tongues. Uh, she heard me and my husband speaking in tongues and she asked me a question. She said, you're not afraid that you might be speaking uh, demonically or, you know, speaking to demons and things like that. And I said, no, mom. I said, in fact, I said, I could show you in the Bible that this is the Holy Spirit and this is a result of being born again and having the Holy Spirit living inside of you, being filled with the Holy Spirit, that you will receive power, you will receive uh, tongues, new tongues. Um, An hour later, she said, Carla, I see a hummingbird flying around you. Uh, but then she said, now it's a dove it's a dove with a cross it's a dove with a cross and it and and the and the dove is just hovering over you he's just hovering over you and he won't leave and she made sure that she was like carla i'm not going crazy i'm not going crazy i'm really seeing this dove and i said mom you're not going crazy. God is opening your eyes to see. God is showing you that he is real and he's opening your eyes to see. And so not only was I experiencing these miracles, but my family, God was also doing a work in my family. God has been with me through the suffering. He showed my mom her first vision. And, and honestly, if I had to go through this just so that she could have her first vision and her own encounter with Christ, then it was worth it. That's how it looks. I have the, um, these are uh, tubes. See, I have a drainage tube. I woke up to God speaking to me. I heard his audible voice and he spoke the name Catherine. And I was wondering, who is this Catherine that I was asking the nurses around the ICU? They said, we don't know a Catherine. I go on the UCSF app. It's called my chart and I see that I have an appointment with a Catherine and I began to pray for her I didn't know what God wanted me to pray for her but I prayed for her to be saved I prayed for God to touch her I prayed for God to re reveal himself to her afterwards I also heard the word Benaya and Benaya in Hebrew means Yahweh builds and the moment God spoke this to me I felt the fire of God like I've never felt it in my life I felt as if I was in a furnace as if I was face to face with Jesus Christ and my whole body was burning up and from then God showed me this cancer situation it's not meant to tear you up the enemy was trying to do that the enemy was trying to take you out the enemy was trying to to break you apart with this to steal your worship and steal your praise 
and steal your testimony. But God said, I'm not allowing him to do that. In fact, I'm using this to build you up because of what I'm doing in your life. You did great. You're walking. Is that the first time? That's a big deal. The next day after my surgery, I walked in the ICU without a walker. I walked with a cast where the doctors told me that one, I was going to get my eye removed or that I might get my eye removed. Two, they told me that it would take me seven months for me to walk on my two feet. But I walked the next day without a walker and God showed another miracle. I, I was actually healing so fast that they couldn't believe it. And they said, we have to remove this cast because you're healing up so fast. You're already walking. So this happened. This is a miracle from God. Today they removed the cast. I'm able to walk three times a day on my leg without a bone, without a fibula bone. But I was able to walk the next day for my surgery. And now they told me that my healing process is so good that they had to remove the stitches and everything. And now I'm just healing. This is supernatural. And I'm going to continue to give God the glory and share the miracles of God that are still for today. And I saw this supernatural healing just continue to take place. The doctors were telling me that the swelling would take up to a year to go down. But it was only three months, four months, and I'm almost back to normal. Hey everybody, I haven't been live lately, but today I wanted to do a two week update on how everything is going, my healing. As you can see, my neck is going back to how it was. Um, my swelling has gone down a lot. I'm able to open my eye more. Um, there's only a little bit of redness, um, but that's clearing up. The bruising, everything is just, it just seems like it's clearing up. I'm able to talk more. Steven here and Carly here, we just want to come and Thank every single person who donated today at the raffle and thank everybody who just came and just donated because they wanted to donate. We had no idea how much love was at our church until we went through this season. Mm -hmm. And to see everybody that gave and to see everybody that was asking and checking in on my wife, you know, it just, it hits a certain part of you. And... We're very grateful and we just want to say thank you. My husband had to take care of me and my daughters. It was hard for us because my husband wasn't working and I've been waiting for disability and still haven't received a check. God told me to start a GoFundMe and I was a little skeptical. I was like, God, I don't know if I should start a GoFundMe because people might not donate. And I remember God said, don't worry, just do it because I'm going to touch the, the hearts of my people and they will bless you and they will help you. And I'm just so grateful. I mean, it's not even just about the finances, but it's the compassion it's the heart of Christ that people carry. I'm just so grateful that we're able to pay our bills, we're able to pay our rent, uh, we can have food for our children. The Lord is a provider, and I know this, that it's not just the finances, but the Lord is providing me strength to go through this. He's, He's giving me the grace to walk through this because I'm telling you, that there are some days that are harder than the others. There's days where I really feel so much pain. But the Lord gives me the strength to keep going.
I started my treatment with the chemotherapy. I ended up losing my hair. I ended up uh, going through the symptoms, digestive problems, things like that. I would be very fatigued. It was just very hard for me to do anything, to even go up my stairs. As I would pray in the spirit, God would supernaturally, he would give me supernatural strength that I would feel it. I would literally feel it. Just the spirit, my spirit would be strengthened so much so that the second after the second cycle, God gave me supernatural strength so much to the point where I was able to clean my house. I was good. I was able to cook. I was able to do more things with my girls, able to go out with my husband. Today is the last day of my second cycle. Let me tell you guys, I've been here at the hospital for about a week. I'm ready to go. This cycle really kicked my butt. Um, but I think the Lord that he is showing me in this season how strong he is and me recognizing how weak I am so that I can fully depend and trust on the Lord and rely on him for everything, for strength, for joy, for peace, whatever it is that I need. I believe that when you put your trust in God, then when when you uh, decide to worship Him in the midst of your worries, in the midst of your concerns, or how you may feel, how fatigued your body may feel. Because let me tell you that there's there was times where I couldn't even get out of bed, but I would pray. I would pray in bed, and the Lord would just. It would, it would be like a charge, like a supernatural charge that I would jump out of my bed and just dance in the spirit. I would worship in the spirit. And so God is able to do this. God is able to do this when you completely put your trust in him and when you completely have faith in him that no matter what you go through no matter what you feel in your body no matter what the doctors say God is able to do this I've never seen a woman so strong in, in, in their faith while going through something like this and uh, my wife is definitely one of the strongest women I've ever met because you know in any at any given moment she could have threw in the towel and say you know what I just I don't want to pray right now. I don't. I don't want to read right now. I don't want to. I don't. I don't, I don't want to worship right now. But it's like it's harder. It, the harder things got, the more she would press in. The more she would pray. You know, the doctors tell her this. She would pray more. A month after my surgery, God put it on my heart to write a book, and it was a children's book. In that moment, I said, okay, well, I don't know what to write about. I don't know what you want me to write about. And God said, no, you do. You do know what to write about. Write about what your daughter experienced. She dealt with problems with her self-image. She didn't really like the skin that she was in. She thought she was too brown. Um, her hair, there was times where she would say, Mommy, I don't like my hair like that. Why are you doing my hair like that? And I would tell her over and over, Baby, your hair is beautiful. Your your skin is beautiful. Your skin is brown like mine. You, you look just like Mommy. And God wanted me to talk about this because he told me that there were other children that, that battle with this. In the book, it's me and my daughter, and I'm encouraging her. I'm, I'm speaking life into her, and I'm uh, just reminding her that she's created in God's image, that God gave her eyes to see, that God gave her a mouth to taste, that God gave her hands to touch. I talk about how beautiful her, her skin is and how beautiful her hair is. Uh, it's just me reassuring her that she is created in God's image, that she is beautifully and fearfully, uh, wonderfully made in God's image, and that she doesn't look any different from anyone else. Yes, we may have different skin, but we're all created in God's image. 
But as of now, the CT scan showed that there is no evidence, no sign of cancer in my body. And that is, I mean, I can't say that that's the biggest miracle because every miracle is big. Every miracle that comes from God is a blessing, is big. Second cycle. Hope is rising. I'm praising the Lord God. Hallelujah. I don't feel anything. I've just been praying. Jesus, you are worthy. Jesus, you are holy. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. One thing that I could leave you with is that God is faithful and I just want to encourage you that no matter what you're going through, no matter what your situation looks like, no matter what the doctors say, whatever report you receive, God has a better report for you. All you have to do is believe the word of God. Hallelujah. I thank you, God. Hallelujah. That I will rise up, God. Hallelujah. From the deathbed, God. Oh, hallelujah. And they will know that you are my God. Jesus, I glorify you, Jesus. I magnify you, Jesus. You have been so good to me, God. You have been so good to me, Lord. I have tasted and seen of your goodness, God. Lord, I'm a Whatever your situation is, find a scripture and declare God's word over you and stand on it. Don't waver in your faith and you watch what God will do because if he did it for me, then God will do it for you. I thank you for my miracle, God. Every miracle, God. For blessing us, God. I thank you, Lord.
And I just want you to know that there is hope in Jesus Christ. There is hope in the blood of Jesus. There is hope in the name of Jesus that God is able to heal you where you are. God is able to restore you. God is able to make you whole. All you have to do is put your faith in God and worship Him. If you have a supernatural encounter that you would like to share on camera, please visit SupernaturalEncounters.com to submit your testimony.